welcome to worship on this Sunday we've come to know as Christ the King Sunday. It's when we uh, give honor and glory to Christ being the King, the ruler, the ultimate judge um, in the end. It's also uh, the Sunday when we gather here and then take up a pause for who knows when. Uh, my hope is as things get better we will know and we have some hope with some vaccines in, in the works so we will be in touch as we as we continue uh, to go through this season actually begin a new season with advent next week uh, into the christmas season and of course the winter and what comes thereafter we're praying for our last hour this year yes so today's our last inside in-house uh, in-person uh-huh. worship so we will go back to what we've been doing in the the, the spring and into most of the summer, which would be a recorded version, and then we broadcast that via Zoom on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for those who would call in or, or jump in. But yes, it will be on YouTube, it will be on our website, and this is the best we can do in the midst of pandemic. Um, but my hope is that you continue to be safe during this time, and as you continue to stay in touch, call up each other, and reach out, and when there's a need, um, and of, of course, reach out to the church office as well if there's um, such a, pa- a need for pastors here. So, I know that's a long bit of announcements, but let's jump right into worship now with our call to worship on page three of our book. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God of power and might, your Son has showed us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right, and the strength to serve the world that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
9 to 5, verses 1 to 7, found on page 4 of your bulletin. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with sang. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Lord. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as it did it for one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. To drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer, Answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you this day in the name of Jesus. Today is dedicated to recognizing Jesus as Christ the King. We pause amidst the busyness of this time of year to truly honor Jesus as the supreme ruler and judge of all of creation. But tell me, do these words sound familiar? 
He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Or he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. Sounds familiar? Yeah. These are words from the creeds we confess as a church. These words are inspired by the words about the life of Jesus recorded in Matthew's Gospel as he wrote, When the Son of Man comes in his glory. My friends, what is being shared with us here today is that Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming and coming in glory. Jesus is coming and this time, this time is coming, he is coming with all the angels in all his glory. This time there will be no mistake about who he is. This time around Jesus is coming in all brilliance, not at night, in a bay in some distant back country. This time he's coming accompanied by a host of angels, not singing out in the fields of the shepherds, but with him. And he will sit on his throne, for he is Christ the King. This time around there will be no confusion about his identity, for he is the King of Kings, not as a monarch in some country that we know is allowed to have kingdoms. No, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, ruler and judge over all. Matthew chapter 25 tells us that at this time, everyone will be gathered before him. The dead will be raised and the living will be there too. You and I will be there. So will our loved ones, our friends, our neighbors, our ancestors, as well as future generations. And at this time, the judgment happens. Christ the King will separate the people into two groups. He'll do it like the shepherd usually does with the sheep and the goats. The sheep on the right, the goats on the left. Speaking of sheep and goat, I was leading a Bible study once, and someone asked, but pastor, what does God have against goats? <laughs> what does God have against goats? But more than that, the left hand. Any takers? I don't know, but this was my response. I had to think very quickly that day. Because we find in the gospel, this is, this is the trend. You know, the left hand is not always honorable. And then goats not being really given their due. So my question back was, have you ever observed, observed the behavior of a flock of sheep? Yes. So I said, now you'll find that they're always together. A flock together. They stick together and they follow each other from pasture to pasture. They're always clustered. And whenever they cross the road, especially those in Gaya from Guyana, you would know this. When one goes across the street, they all follow. So driver, beware. How about goats? Have you ever observed a herd of goats outside of the area that they're probably spending the night? One's over there, the other one is up there, the other one is somewhere over here, back there. Scattered. Scattered, separated. They're never together, each on its own, separately, independent of each other. Up until the coming of the Son of Man in His glory, they will be a mixture. They will, they will be together, both sheep and goats. In other words, those among us who work together for the common good of creation and those who work alone, serving their own self-interests, planting seeds of corruption and that of greed. 
Yes, we are together. Now, after this judgment is made, the, the sheep, those who have indeed served God and God's people, are invited. Come. Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. This is good news. For they did not earn the kingdom in any way. They simply inherited. For inheritances are determined by the giver and not the receiver. It's all grace. When you think of it. It's all grace, as the Apostle Paul tells us in, the, in his letters to the Romans, to the Corinthians, and to the Thessalonians. Free, all deserved from God. That is the welcome that awaits the righteous. The righteous do not keep score. They do not know that their deeds are good. They just do it freely. It comes naturally. Maybe they describe it as good. Maybe they just say, it's my calling. It's in my nature to do good. And quite often, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. Because they're all engaged in doing the work of God. They've been called to do. They did as they did because they saw there was a need to help. There was a need to love, to serve, to visit, to, to be. They did it because they themselves perhaps were helped at some point and loved and served and shown mercy and visited and helped. They did it out of pure gratitude for having been blessed by God. Yes, the same God who created them, who redeemed them and now sustained them. To do good for others. My sisters and brothers, you don't have to have a lot to do good. For you already have what is needed to do so. For you have been anointed, baptized into the family of God. For you are a, a child of God, chosen and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Mark for the cross of Christ forever. And this alone, this alone sets you apart from the rest of the world to do good. Not only in the season of Thanksgiving, but every day of our Thanksgiving is not only for this one weekend. Because most of us know what happens exactly after that day set aside for Thanksgiving. And so my challenge to you is to keep on doing the good that you are doing. You know what you do. You know how you live your lives. You know your calling. So let us continue to help those that we can help and love and serve and, and visit and feed. Because in the end, this is the least we can do in return for the sacrifice Jesus Christ the King made for us. So do good in these days. Help when you can and do the best you can with because Christ is among us, the same one who created us, the same one who redeemed us, and the same one who now sustains us for the rest of our journey here on earth. Do good.
confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on page 4 of your book. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry in the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Hear us, O God. Keep your mercy in grace. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Hear us, O God. Keep your mercy in grace. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages. Grant opportunities for ending division among us and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Keep your mercy great. Heal the sinful division we erect between us and release us from systems of oppression and prejudice. Restore our capacity to see your image in those whom dignity we have stripped away. Hear us, O God. Pour out the gifts of your spirit on children and youth throughout the church. Sustain those who work in children's ministry, youth ministry, and campus ministry as they nurture the gifts of young people. Hear us, O God. Thank you for saints now departed, who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and tended to the sick. Inspire us by their example, that we may see your presence in those in need around us. Hear us, O God. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. <laughs> Let us greet one another the sign of God's peace. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power. Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning and welcome again to our worship on this.
this Christ the King Sunday. Just uh, one of the major announcements is that today will be our last uh, in-person gathering for a while, and I want to thank you for being a part of, of this gathering. It means, I know it means a lot to you, but it means a lot to me as well, because I think it was Gail who would, who would ask me over the, I think it was the spring time, how do you preach without some feedback from people around you? So it is helpful to have some interaction um, during the messages and during the service as well. So I thank you. I thank Marina and we're super, and, and Ella, where is she? Hiding in the back. For being a part of the front line, if you want to use church, uh, outside terms in the church here, as, as we reopen um, uh, to have in-person worship. And I am grateful to say that we have not had one case as a result of this, and I hope that you continue to be safe during this time as well. I know the numbers are surging, and not all in New York City, but throughout the country and in Europe, uh, it's exploding again. So please, my prayer is that you be safe and those around you as well during this time. Do not let your guards down. Um, please. So let's be, let's be in contact um, throughout this time. And uh, we will definitely continue to do our, our mission as we uh, get the word out there. And I gotta tell you, this service is not only within these walls anymore. It's it's international. We're getting viewers, and um, every every time the 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 link is hit, we we know who's hitting it, and we know um, where they're hitting it from. So it's a it is also a great way of evangelism, and we don't even know. So. I thank God for that and technology. And of course, for Matthew Carter. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so that's it for now. Let us receive a blessing before our ascending. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life.